Okay, so here the input is an array A of n numbers and we want to count the number of inversions in A. So the first question is what is an inversion? What is an inversion? So an inversion An inversion is a pair of a pair of positions. So these are positions, positions i, comma, j, such that, of course, I want i and j to be in between one and n, and j comes after i. Uh, such that 1 less than or equal to i strictly less than j strictly less than or equal to n and a of i is strictly greater than a of j okay so this means I am looking for two positions okay or, or I am looking for two numbers in this array such that the first number is strictly larger than the second number which means that pair is out of order with respect to sorting okay and that is called an inversion and i want to essentially count the total number of inversions so if i take this example here if you see <clears throat> let's take the first pair five and three so five and three is definitely an inversion because the second number is smaller than the first number. Ideally, we would like to have these numbers in the sorted order, but some of these pairs are messed up. So I'm essentially counting the number of messed up pairs. So this is an inversion. Five and six is fine, right? It's not an inversion. However, five and four is an inversion. Five and one is an inversion. Five and eight is not an inversion. Five and two sorry, 5 and 2 is an inversion, 5 and 7 is not an inversion. So essentially, the number of pairs, the number of pairs or the number of inversions with the first element being 5 is equal to the number of elements coming after 5 such that they are smaller than 5, okay? So all the numbers which are smaller than 5, right, 3, 4, 1, 2, which are after 5 will make an inversion with 5. So there are going to be how many, 1, 2, 3, 4 inversions. There are 4 inversions in this array with the first element being 5. Now how about for 3? So there are 2 numbers which are smaller than 3, like 1 and 2. So 3 will make an inversion with 3, 1 and 3, 2 will make an inversion. So there are two inversions. Uh, for 6, there is 4, 1, 2. Right? There will be three inversions with 6 being the first element. Then if it is 4, there are 2. When it is 5, uh, uh, when it is 1, there is nothing. When it is 8, there is 2, when it is 2, there is nothing, 7, there is nothing, okay? It's correct, right? So with 5, you are going to have the number of elements smaller than 5 is 4, this is 2, 6 has 3, 4 has 2, 1 has nothing, 8 has 2, 2 has nothing, 7 has nothing, okay? So this is correct. And uh, what is the total number of inversions in this array? That is 4 plus 2 plus 3 plus 2 plus 2, which is 6 plus 3, 9, 11, 13. So the number of inversions in this array is 13. Okay, so whatever we did now was kind of like a naive way of computing. Essentially, we compared all pairs. So the naive solution is going to cost us big of n squared, right? We can solve it trivially, but we are looking for something faster and 
what we are going to see in this lecture is an pick of <coughs> n log n time solution using the divide and divide and conquer strategy. Alright, so let us go ahead and see how we are going to do this. Alright, so the first step is this. So the first step is this. I will divide the array into two sub arrays of roughly the same size. Roughly the same size means roughly n over 2 on this side and n over 2 on this side. Let me call this left sub array as a left and this is a right. Okay. So clearly one thing I can say is this number of number of inversions in A, okay, I'm going to use a number N, capital N to denote it, is same as number of inversions in A left, let me call it as NL, uh, NL plus number of inversions in A right, let me call it as N right, plus, right, number of inversions in left, number of inversions in right, and what is left? There could be inversions where the first number, where the first position is in, is on the right side, and the second position, J, is on the left side. Number of Number of number of inversions with with I in the in the left portion or the left subarray in the left subarray and J in the in the right, in the right subarray. Okay, so that is pretty clear. Therefore, what we can write at this point is, suppose Tn is the time complexity for solving this entire problem. What we can say is, right, Tn is the time complexity of the algorithm which we are about to come up with. This is a divide and conquer strategy, so we don't really need to worry about how it actually works, right? All we need to see is how to combine the solutions of sub problems so that you can get the solution to the main problem. So the first part of computing N, NL, basically the number of inversions in the in the left subarray can be done in T N over 2. Similarly, the number of inversions in the right subarray can be computed in Tn over 2 time again, so a total Tn over 2. And now we need a mechanism, we need a mechanism to solve the third portion, right? We need a mechanism to solve the third portion, and I'm gonna say I'm gonna say that I can actually do this in big O of n time. So if that is true, then this is a familiar recursion for us like merge sort, so the whole thing will become n log n and we are done, assuming this can be done in big O of n time. Okay, so the only thing I am left with is just to show you how to solve the third case and that's what we are going to see next. So, so if you look here, what I really want is this, for each number on the left side, right, for each number on the left side, I essentially want to quickly count 
how many numbers are there on the right side which are smaller than that right that's the only thing i need to know to solve the third component so what i can do is just what i can do is this you basically you sort you sort the right somewhere a r you just sort it and maintain it right so if i do this example then this will be 1 2 7 8 just sort it and keep it then what you do is you take each element right like for example like 5 and i want to see how many elements are there in this array which are smaller than 5 what i can do is i can binary search for 5 and immediately i will get how many numbers are there which are smaller than 5 right so that solves the issue right so how much time this will take firstly i have to sort this right and this array is of size n over 2 so roughly that sorting is going to cost me n over 2 log n over 2 this is same as big of n log n right then after that i have to take each of these elements and do a binary search again i have n over 2 elements and the binary search is going to cost us big of log n so if you do the math that will also become big of n log n so if this is the approach we're going to use then our recursion will look like tn is equal to 2 times tn over 2 plus big of n log n and if you evaluate this, your answer will be n log square n. Alright, so n log square n is still much better than n square, but not, not exactly what we wanted to achieve, right? We are slightly off, we are off by a log factor. So, how to get it off that extra log? All right, so what I'm going to do is this. This is a small trick which I will do. I don't want to do this sorting all the time, right? This sorting is what is going to, this sorting is what is giving me one n log n and there is also a binary search part and somehow I want to avoid these two things. And for that, this is my trick. Uh, previously, I defined Tn as the time for solving the uh, counting problem. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to define Tn slightly differently. So I will define Tn as the time for time for counting, counting inversion plus, plus sorting. I just added an extra sorting. Okay. So what happens now? Now what happens is, when I, after I solve these sub problems, I will get uh, this, I will get four things. One is, I will get these values, the number of inversions in the left subarray, NL, in the right subarray. And I will also get this thing, which is nothing but sorted AL and sorted AR. Right? So when I move to the next recursion, I should compute the total number of inversions, which is A is equal to N left plus N right plus something extra because of this, because of the third component that I need to figure out. And I should also populate the complete sorted array, right? Which is an easy thing for me. Because if I have the sorted A and sorted B, sorted, sorted left subarray and sorted right subarray, I can easily merge them in big O of n time. So this part is simply big O of n time. This is still good with me. And how am I going to get this portion? For this, I'm going to use the following trick. All right. So now that I have the sorted left subarray and the sorted right subarray. So let me just use this example, which is 
5, uh, this is 3, 4, 5, 6, and 1, 2, 7, 8. Okay, so both of these are sorted now. A left, A up, but in the sorted order. What I really want to find out is for each number, I want to see how many numbers are there in the other array which are lesser than myself, right? So I'm going to do a small trick. I will get the complete merged array, right? I'll merge these two array and I'll get the complete sorted list, which will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, right? One, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and along with these numbers, along with these numbers, I will try to maintain an additional information that from which array it came from. For example, one came from the right subarray, two came from the right subarray, whereas three is from the left, four is from the left, five is from the left. 6 is from right, 7 is from, sorry, 6 is also from left, 7 is from right, and 8 is from right. Alright? Good. So now if you look at our original problem, what we really want to do is what? For each number in the left subarray, I want to know how many elements are there in the right subarray which are smaller than itself to solve this what i can do is a very simple trick i will scan the array from left to right i will scan the array from left to right and each time i will maintain a counter and each time i will maintain a counter which is the number of number of entries from R. Okay. Each time I will maintain a counter which is the number of entries from R. So in the first case, the number of entries from R until this point is 1. The number of entries from R until this point is 2. Here it is still 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 2. Here it is 3. And here it is 3. Alright. Now, all I want is what? For each number from the left, I want to know how many numbers are there in the right subarray which are smaller than itself. For example, this is the first number from the left subarray, which is 3. And if I want to know how many numbers are there in the right subarray which are smaller than 3, it is immediately available here. Similarly, for this guy, it is immediately available here. For this guy, it's immediately available here. For this guy, it's immediately available here. So if you have more numbers here, again you can just have a look and get it immediately. Right? And finally you can just sum all of these numbers to get this quantity. Good. And if you look at this carefully, how much time we have spent? Because both of these we got from the previous recursion. All we did was emerging big O of n time with this additional information, left right information. So all of these things can be done in big O of n time. Therefore, the recursion will stay the same, right? Which is exactly like the merge sort. Therefore, the final complexity is big O of n log n.